I'm Colonel Mill Askins of the Air Defense Command, United States Air Force. As I'm sure you know, the mission of the Air Defense Command is to protect this continent from any hostile air attack that might be launched against us. And as I'm sure you also know, the units of the Air Defense Command, which are located here in your community, are a very important part of this operation. In a very real sense, they represent your personal protection against any such enemy air invasion. My purpose in visiting with you today is to tell you a little more about how we in the Air Defense Command conduct our mission. Particularly, I would like to familiarize you with our newest weapon system, the McDonald F-101B Interceptor, which is now entering squadron duty here. In a few moments, I would like to discuss our mission with you. However, first, may I present to you the story of the outstanding McDonald F-101B Voodoo. This is the F-101B Voodoo Jet Long Range Interceptor, the newest and most potent weapon system in the operational squadrons which will defend the North American continent. It is your most effective protection against enemy aircraft which approach the borders of the United States with hostile intent. No airplane in the history of air power has had better qualifications for a particular mission. For the Voodoo is more than just an airplane. It is a complete weapon system, the culmination of a 10-year engineering and manufacturing effort by the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation of St. Louis, Missouri, in conjunction with the Air Force. Let us examine briefly the basic ingredients of this lethal two-man weapon system. First of all, the Voodoo has sizzling speed, the ability to get off fast and intercept enemy formations before they can come within range of our territory. Second, the Voodoo has extreme range, which makes it most capable of carrying out missions of both offense and defense. Third, the Voodoo has great firepower with the ability to deliver multiple combinations of bombs, missiles, and rockets, which are directed against enemy targets by the radar observer who serves as the attack director. And fourth, the Voodoo has been designed with a high safety factor. During its first year of tactical operation, the Voodoo had the lowest accident rate of any operational fighter in the history of the United States Air Force. These four characteristics, speed, range, firepower, and safety, have emerged through years of careful experimentation and research. Thousands of engineering man hours were expended to explore every facet of this complex fighter before production could get underway. In the McDonald Physical Test Laboratory, engineers carried out an exhaustive program to prove the structural integrity of the new fighter. And as McDonnell engineers and technicians perfected the Voodoo airframe, the power plant, two Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojet engines, was undergoing parallel testing. Hundreds of hours of ground testing of these engines took place prior to first flight. The complex electronic weapons control system and radar installation was developed concurrently by the Hughes Aircraft Corporation. This vast coordinated effort was culminated in August 1954, when the first Voodoo was airlifted to Edwards Air Force Base in California for the flight test phase of the program. Just one month later, the Voodoo completed its first test flight, and the McDonnell flight test crew realized immediately that the Air Force has a winner. Air Force evaluation began just 37 days after the first flight. More than 3,000 development flight hours were amassed during the test program, and the Voodoo has emerged as probably the most completely developed complex airplane any operating squadron has ever received. The four basic concepts of speed, range, firepower, and safety have been proven again and again in a series of achievements that have been heralded throughout the world. One of the Voodoo's most notable achievements was Operation Firewall, the successful assault on the world speed record which had been held by the British. The record toppled before the Voodoo's onslaught on December 12, 1957 at Edwards Air Force Base, California. The Voodoo completed both legs of the measured 10-mile course at a blistering average speed of 1,207 miles an hour. The big fighter was piloted by Major Adrian E. Drew. 
less than a month previous, on November 27th, a flight of six photo-reconnaissance voodoos underscored the long-range speed and dependability of the voodoo in Operation Sun Run. At stake were the transcontinental speed records of the United States. The voodoo's range was extended by mobile filling stations in the sky, giant tankers which rendezvoused with the Sun Run airplane. Voodoo performance was flawless. So good, in fact, that the two airplanes that had been designated as spares turned back after the first refueling. The four remaining voodoos went on to make aerial history. Before the day had ended, all three transcontinental records, west to east, east to west, and round trip, had been swept up by the sun-run voodoos. Record time from west to east was three hours, seven minutes. The round trip was made in six hours, 46 minutes. Mobile Zebra, another Air Force operation, again proved the operational mobility of the voodoo. Leaving from Shaw Air Force Base, North Carolina, the group flew to the west coast and then island hopped the entire Pacific to arrive in Tokyo. During the return trip, a new speed record from Japan to Hawaii of six hours, three minutes was set. And the records continue to pile up. A flight of voodoos from Austin, Texas, completed a 5,950-mile hop to England in a record 10 hours, 45 minutes. Another non-stop endurance flight, this one of 11-hour duration for a distance of 5,600 miles, was made from Bergstrom Air Force Base, Texas. In June 1958, the Atlantic was again spanned from Washington, D.C. to Belgium in six hours, 12 minutes. While voodoo-equipped operational squadrons continued to dissolve existing records, engineers and technicians sharpened the voodoo sting. The interceptor voodoo is capable of delivering advanced nuclear weapons in all kinds of weather at any target airborne or ground, visible or invisible. And vitally important to any air defense system, the crew of this manned interceptor can distinguish between friend or foe before it's too late. Enemy bombers, single or in groups, can be vaporized by one voodoo-born genie air-to-air -air nuclear rocket. The voodoo can also pack a lethal load of Falcon missiles. So the end result of 10 years of continuous evolution is a modern weapon system with every basic ingredient for the defense of the free world. The speed to overtake and the range to intercept. The firepower to destroy all types of targets in any weather. And the margin of safety to return from the mission. It is these basic concepts designed into every inch of the voodoo that the Air Force has polished to a high luster through the most exhaustive test program ever known. It is these concepts that will help ensure our freedom. Perhaps you would like to know just what we in the Air Defense Command can do for you with this sparkling voodoo. As I have said, we must be prepared at all times to go out and meet and annihilate the enemy before, and I emphasize before, the enemy reaches our borders. As you have seen, with the voodoo we are able to get upstairs in a hurry. You can appreciate the importance of our going a long way out over our borders, hundreds of miles, to intercept the enemy. And we have the armament, Falcon and Genie missiles, that give us the stuff to destroy enemy invaders singly or in groups. In short, we think we are providing you with the best possible air defense your money can buy at this time. I'd like to make one other point. We of the Air Defense Command also believe an important part of our mission is to conduct our activities with full consideration of the public interest. Let's face it, supersonic jet aircraft are sometimes frightening things, at least when first introduced to a community. They do make noise and they can make quite a boom when they fly faster than the speed of sound. Please believe me that our operations will be so conducted to minimize the disturbance as much as we can while still carrying on our mission. But please remember also that the sound you hear under certain circumstances 
can be the most comforting sound you have ever heard. Some people call it the sound of freedom. Thank you.